Pranakosha live stream. Hey folks, it's Matt at Pranakosha Productions, and today we are talking with Oliver Hollingdale, an amazing filmmaker who cut his teeth making some incredible Viking films and now is embarking on a brand new project of a beautiful fantasy film that everybody's got to see called Galmir. Yeah, hello, hello. Hey. Hey, how are you? Good to be back. We're going to show you guys a beautiful trailer that but before, um, I just want to say if you, you like our channel, be sure you like our video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, leave some Doesn't comments help. down below. And if you really like this interview, please share it on your favorite uh, platform, social media platform of choice. All those things help out the channel. It's going to help out Oliver. Oliver's also got a... Um, a funding, uh, uh, Indigo funding platform rolling along. All those things are really going to help out this project and everything is going to be great in the world. So, all right, you sent me the the preview trailer of what you guys are up to and it looks super cool. Oh, can, thank you. Yes, yeah. that's been sort of block one of, uh, yeah, filming. Um, yeah, I think we didn't hit our target with the last one. So we're back with doing a second one. So whatever money we raised for the first one, which is just a little over a thousand, a thousand British pounds, we utilized, we started shooting scenes that we could um, kind of accommodate with the budget. And so, yeah, so we kind of got the ball rolling. We've exhausted <laughs> funds very easily, uh, oh, mainly yeah, I mean- due for, for, um, I think it's just a lot kind of more for the accommodation and the um, fuel problems that we've been going on. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> oh, I mean, you could God. blow up that much money on just like food for the actors. Oh, most you of know? it all went on. I mean, yeah, it was just crazy, crazy. I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> it's just the well, logistics. I Very, can't believe how good it is what you've done on like a, a almost zero budget. I'm, yeah. I'm very, yeah. very lucky and blessed with the people who we have. Um, involved um, from, uh, for example like the costume guy uh, Christopher he's um, a costume creator at his sort of IP brand called the Norse Dragon Armory yeah he's um, stepped in and, and volunteered his uh, free uh, time and efforts to with costumes and things so I mean that's one of the was the biggest head scratchings thinking like oh my god costumes because if yeah. you know if you go down to like a Halloween fancy dress costume and get some renaissance it's just gonna look really really like larping <laughs> larping yeah. in the woods so yeah. yeah so and you know I was working in the early days budgeting crunching numbers thinking my god this is going to be about 800 uh, per character spend it you know it's four characters and it's gonna be you know if we're going to build these costumes from scratch so right. I, I oh, just every day I'm just like my god thanks to Christopher for you know, believing in our ideas and what we're trying to do. He came to the production meeting in the pre-production stage and kind of really just pitched all the, everything that we're trying to do. And yeah, he's just been absolutely um, a diamond in everything. So yes. Yeah, so thankfully in that kind of respect from costumes, perfect. And, um, and the cameras, you know, we're blessed to live in an age now where we have such a great arsenal of technology around us um, right. and cameras that all shoot 4k at really great resolutions and, and great color formats. So yeah, you know, is it never better time um, to be a filmmaker? Kind of you know, there's yeah. no, there's no kind of excuse to get out there and start shooting stuff, no matter how bad or good it is. But the one thing that we're just thinking, you know, raising the money for is just to help with lo- the logistics side of things. Right. Getting people to do from um whether it's like you know maybe like at some point we'll probably need to hire like a small minivan chuck everything in move people it's just it's just trying to funding just to kind of get the well-oiled machine as best as we can logistics yeah everyone's doing it off their own back so literally it's just going into just making sure we can just get to where we want to get to shoot because we've got everything everything. that's that's the that's the um the beauty of it well let's watch the trailer and then we can talk about it tomorrow so i'm going to start it right now I stood frozen. My blood turned to ice. All I could do was stare at the shadow. Now it has returned. If what Solomon says is true, 
This is folly. What we are dealing with here is far beyond anything you have faced. Yeah, that's amazing that you did that in 1500 bucks. Woo. I mean, like, where did you guys get the swords? The swords? Um, <clears throat> the great thing is about doing all the kind of the Viking stuff from before is we know people who have access to a, a large array of weapons mixed in. Uh, some uh, One of the actors in the film, he has his own swords as well. So I think we've only purchased... Um, one sword <laughs> okay. out of everything. So everything else. Now, <laughs> are all these got. swords props or do they have a sharp edge on them? Um, they're all blunt. So you can, but you can, you know, do good sort of steel, steel contact and things. So yes, yeah, so there's no okay. um, damage that can be done. It just looks the part. It's just, because I mean, in the very early stages as well, when budgets were kind of, you know, with costume and things, I think of like all LARP weapons and things mm -hmm. like that. It's one, you know, LARP weapons, although they're foam, one, they didn't look convincing. You can see they don't have the weight to it. You okay. can sort of see unless you, yeah, it's too expensive. You know, they end up costing more than an actual sword. Right. <laughs> you know, it can be like a couple hundred bucks, whereas one of the swords that we got was about $80. Okay. So, but it looks better. It has the weight. So when it's, and especially now on, on camera, you can just see, yeah, they've got really good proper weapons. It just looks yeah, and just adds I was, to that. <clears throat> I was just thinking about that, you know, like everybody's like, you got to shoot in 4K now. I want to see 4K. And I'm like, God, I feel sorry for like the people that make the props and, and the costumes and stuff. Cause before, yeah. I mean, totally. I mean, now you can see every tiny little flaw before at least, you know, you could get away with a lot. Yes. Um, and even now, you know what I would do if I were a director, I would shoot it in 4k so I could say it was 4k, but then I would go back and I would, gaussy and blur a lot of it to soften it up yeah you know especially like when like if you have monsters or anything that have any kind of ru rubber mask that they're wearing i mean it's so easy even like a n number one effect shop now if you watch it in super high resolution you can still tell that it's fake yeah but absolutely. so i would still i would personally do that you know because it would be 4k but i had then would have gone in and digitally buzzed it up some to make it look more theatrical yeah you know? there's lots of techniques along the way that i've got in mind of that because again 4k 4k is great but again it, it's really insanely sharp yeah and when you kind of want that aesthetic of like a film quality it's far away from that so with the cameras we're kind of using and the people who got involved helping shoot we know that we can tweak the settings in camera Oh, and in the using, camera. Okay. And yeah, so uh, the standard settings are always set to sharp, high color, high dynamic, right. all that sort of stuff. We we strip it right back, and and also we shoot on like a uh, like a raw. It's almost like if you do photography, you get like the raw image where you can manipulate it better. It retains that detail right from from in the camera with with no settings. So when you look at the image, it looks grey, looks washed out. But when you come to color grade it, you can add the sharpness you can right. add the, the colors and you, so they, yeah you can manipulate to get that look mix in with, with lenses as well if you shoot on particular lenses and that's one of the big things as well is um different lenses give different looks you can you know kind of get standard kit lenses that come with the cameras but have a very commercial look to it very sterile look but if you start looking at sort of cinema lenses and, and right push Obviously, it costs a bit more, but you can hire them out and things like that. But that's when you get the nice bokeh and soft fall off in the background. And it right. just adds that 
yeah, so all these things we're just very conscious of them, what we've been using for Gallery and everything, because you want it to look as good as good as we can. So you guys, either you already own that equipment or the crew that you quote between hire us, between us, between us, we've it. got um, we've got more or less everything. Along the way, there may be the odd thing that we might hire, but over the years, because we all come from videography backgrounds, between us, we have lights, we have cameras, we have all the kind of the things because again it's just so readily readily available these days right that's the kind of thing we don't have to worry about oh no you know we need this need this but between us so that's helped so the costumes and this have helped dramatically with um the kind of the budget really <laughs> plus <laughs> you guys are doing you're doing battle scenes and stuff and you have to hire you have like people that are trained stunt people that are training you and doing all the choreography and everything too right yeah, so um, again, going back to the kind of the Viking stuff we did, I've been uh, befriended a lot of Viking reenactors who do a lot of battle sparring. So uh -huh. you can get so, and they go to events every year and they do training in fields where you used to get that kind of charge into each other and things like that. So, uh -huh. yeah, so I've just been in contact with them and they're very excited to be involved down the line. And uh, yeah, we've also been doing choreography. Um, sort of stuff on mats and gyms and things like that to hide out yes. spaces to, yeah to kind of um build like a, a fighting style because you've got an elf we've got like a rogue or like a, sort of an assassin type figure as well fighting these outlaws so yeah it's just trying to see what we can pull off well yeah you know, trying to fit out people's limitations because not everyone is a skilled fighter and again you know we, we can't hire the john wick fight school for this so right. we've just got to kind of think, okay, well, what can we do? What's everyone's strengths and things? And we're just trying to adapt to the fighting style. So when we see it, hopefully it just looks, we're kind of just going, these t the, the, our heroes are efficient at what they do. So we're just, think, we're just trying to keep it nice and, <laughs> well, that's it. Someone comes in, you know, block, kill, block, kill, elf, okay. arrow, you know, fire two arrows, takes out two guys. Just trying to keep, to show that, yeah. So, yeah, we're just, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, adapting and yeah it's uh, it's fun some days it's like, i feel like i want to pull my hair out with some things like how are we going to do this but, but you got lots of hair so to pull <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if i run out i can start pulling my beard hair <laughs> yeah um well you know actually i've done a bit of larping my oldest when my oldest uh kid was in college we did I, we did some larping so it was really fun oh. and but we did it with like with foam swords and stuff you know it wasn't like Every once in a while, you'd see somebody that would come out with really nice looking chain mail or plate mail and stuff. Yeah, of course. And um, and of course, when you do that, when you're doing these fake battles, I mean, if you film that, it would it wouldn't look it would look terrible because no, not real yet. fighting doesn't look nearly as good as choreographed fighting d oh, that we're no, used to. You know, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And um, yeah, it's just with laughing because I did think about laughing communities and there's not a big deal in the uk i know it's very big oh, really? in the us oh, and no. they've got a big um larping international in germany every year and they they look absolutely stunning i might you know depending on how long galamere goes on for i might look to maybe try and go sort of next year if i can to kind of grab some because it looks absolutely stunning but there's nothing like that over here in england which is really sad because hmm. even for example if the battle of people fighting doesn't look great, but having our heroes and a group fighting in the foreground, but knowing there's people fighting in the background mm -hmm. out of shot, it adds that scale and depth to it. So they might not right. be the best, but filling that is about filling those kind of dead spaces to, you know, to mm -hmm. kind of show that there's, yeah. So it's just sad that there's nothing like that. If there was, absolutely, that'd be amazing to try and go to. But yeah, sadly, it's, um, yeah, there's no sort of LARPing. Um, well, I know what you could do. I mean, <clears throat> I know what I would do, but my type of shows are way different. I just start searching on YouTube for LARPing, bat, LARPing videos and just take the clips and throw them <laughs> in as a background. There are loads of yeah. ways around that with kind of stock footage and things. And that is like a plan 
and see in my mind as well because again you can hit up these stock shot sites and you can purchase them and manipulate mm -hmm. them and things and worst case scenario is that we could manipulate it maybe green screen some of our heroes right. was into it for flashback sequences or whatever so i'm always thinking of like plan b you know plan a plan b plan c plan d just trying to kind of have all these just in case but yeah. if we can i want to you know it'd be amazing to shoot it for um for real because i just think it's nothing more satisfying to go oh god yeah we shot that we shot that you know kind of people running towards each other it's just yeah it's just i mean to, to people who probably see it will probably go wow that's amazing but in my mind oh. i'd be going god oh, which we shot that see the thing is i mean what you're trying to do you're trying to do like the impossible which is but you're pulling it off is a film on z literally no budget right so uh, you're just and you, everybody's doing it volunteer, right? Yes, everyone is. Yeah, you're holding it to the standards of a, of like a multi million dollar film, you know? It's yeah, absolutely. It's um, yeah, it's tough. It is really tough. However, it's just trying to know what we can pull off well versus oh yeah let's let's we want a dragon or we want a huge battle sequence our our main story doesn't focus on those i guess cliches as it were because if you because i watch a lot of fancy uh, from high end all the way down to sort of b movies and because i like to kind of see what works and doesn't work and right. it informs me of all right if we end up doing this what's the kind of do's and don'ts right so i've seen a lot of b movies uh fancy films that are online or you can buy like you know in the sort of bargain bin discount section in the supermarket and a lot of times they always do the classic dragon right um which unless you've got game of thrones or lord of the rings budget it's it's gonna look it's, gonna look, it's, gonna, it's just gonna cheapen the whole production right down right and well <clears throat> or what you could do is if you've got a halfway decent CGI dragon, but it still is obviously CGI, I mean, you could really set it up so that the lighting is super dark, you know, and somehow you can obscure it and cover that yeah, up. Yeah, you have to think, you have to think about, yeah, the sort of the less is more hinting at it, right. showing glimpses of it. And yeah, if they do that, but I know there's a lot of these fantasies that they come. Kind of, we've got a dragon and they've got it doing aerials or breathing fire, and you can tell it's just stock footage oh, fake, together. Yeah. And and even yeah. the flames don't match color contrast, and the dragon's paws are just stiff. It, it has yeah. no articulation and the wings are kind of <laughs> and yeah, well, that's just, cause yeah. partly because you get into the thing where it's a fan film, so then you have someone who wants to do VFX for you and you're like, oh, great, okay. But it's all volunteer. So yeah. when they give you something that's, you know, really not that good, it's not like you can fire them or something or you're like, hey, I need, yeah, no, not course. paying them. So I think what happens is a lot of those films get into that situation where they're more interested in the community spirit of it. And so they absolutely. have to let things go. Yeah, absolutely. For the project. So, Absolutely. but you're obviously you're on a different level where like you you have really high standards, so you're able to walk that line. And I guess probably you just right up front, you you get everybody to really buy into, you, even though this is a low budget fan film, it's mm. super high quality, and that's what we're going for. Absolutely, right? and yeah, with this with the kind of we're focusing on the story and the characters and trying to establish this kind of small kind of big uh, um, developing story in this big world and so we're kind of looking at things like okay locations we, and things like that we want to kind of show Beautiful that location shots. the locations are part of this world and, and okay so we may be shooting in a lot of forested areas mm -hmm. but we want to kind of show different types of forests so every time we see a shot there it shows they're moving from place to place so mm -hmm. one minute there's, there, it looks very different and then it just kind of treating the environment as a character in itself right and it's, it's, it's the cinematography is how you do that like for example i just watched the orville um darn i was trying to get this to, to go where i wanted but it didn't um i watched the orville um season three episode three and there was a fair amount of it that they shot in a, it was on a, another planet 
And, but it was shot in the woods. Obviously it was the woods on earth. And I was thinking, you know, they're walking around in this woods and I've seen lots of fan films walking around in woods. It just look, I'm like, this isn't another planet. This, they're just walking around in the woods in their backyard. But on these shots, it was convincing. And I'm like, why is this working? And then I realized a lot of, they were doing a lot with cinematography. So the camera was moving around a lot, you know, and, and it, they weren't just static shots. So they were doing artful things with yep. the scene that made it look authentic. Yep. And that made a normal old woods look like you were in like a little movie. And that's part of what they keep plugging this season is that each episode is like a little mini movie. And you can tell they do a lot with the, a lot of cinematic type of um, stuff in the show. So same thing, like, I mean, you can find a nice, I mean, you just go to like your nearby park, but you find just the right shots, you know, by just yeah. the, the coolest looking tree or some bushes that you really like, and then you figure out how to do it, plan it, and if you do it really well, it looks great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's loads of kind of things like that. How yeah, how can we make it feel? Yeah, because we want we want to stand out from the kind of the B movie mm -hmm. aesthetic, and it's kind of like how can we do that? Because we want people to look at it and they're going to go, well, yeah, it is a low budget piece, but my god, they yeah, they've done a really good job. And oh, god, if they had a huge budget, what these guys could do, you know, if if we kind of get that response from people who see Galamir. I'll, you know, we will be very happy. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's just it's just trying to overcome these um, these kind of uh, technical and or kind of visual hitches when it comes with fantasy. And yeah, just yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the very. I'm looking at one second into the trailer, right? And I just freeze framed it, and you've got. It's, like, even this freeze frame looks great. Like it's, uh, there's the, I think it's an elfin girl, yeah, who's, you can see her arrows, and then there's another guy who's like, maybe an elf, but he's got magic power, so he's like a druid or something like that. Yeah. His eyes are glowing, and he's going like this. Yep. Um, but even that freeze frame looks super good. I mean, if you took that. Um, and I can see you guys already did some of those effects, like it's fuzzed out a little bit, you know, and then it looks like it's color corrected using Da Vinci or something like that. Oh yeah, Da Vinci is the way. And then the, the special effect of this glowing guy's glowing eyes look really good. Great. Yeah, they <laughs> good. look super yeah, it's just cool. very, we're very conscious as well of, um, to have, when there is magic in the finished piece that it looks good and it's and it's and it serves a purpose and it serves a purpose um to the story and it's not trying to show off too much because again i just think we live in a world where i think we're so desensitized by so you take much it for granted CGI. Yeah. that's yeah. correct and um our heroes in the story they they are facing a evil sort of entity from this kind of shadow plane, almost like a necromancery type thing. And at the moment we're, we're discussing on how that's going to look in the final act, because again, there's so many different ways you can go with it, but if it, if it doesn't work out on pulling it off, well, all right, what we're still going to do is we're going to build the tension, build this threat up all the way through the story. Uh, you know, kind of rely on the less is more. The unknown is the more terrifying thing. And as our heroes, we start in the story, it's very beautiful forests and things like that. And then when they go to, to as they get closer and closer to where they, they need to go, it gets darker. The, the colours drain from the image there. And we're oh, going to okay. shoot a lot of it sort of towards sort of autumn time. So we start, it looks like the leaves are falling off. So it, we give off the impression that the, the woods and the, the landscape is sick. And it's okay. feeling, it just feels like it's being corrupted by whatever this darkness is spreading. So things like that, visual cues and through conversations of our characters and, and moments, is we're building this threat. So when we do come to the final third act of the story, whatever we can do, it has weight to it. So if we do do something where it's quite fantastical with magic, it feels earned. It feels like it's, okay, This we've built up this threat. Yeah, they got to do what they can now to to stop it. 
That's neat. Yeah. So you're obviously you're heavily influenced by Lord of the Rings, right? Oh, who isn't? <laughs> um, did you also see, um, like when I was a kid, when I was in high school, uh, the movie Excalibur came out. Did you ever see that movie? I saw that in my, I think I was, I've seen it in pieces. I've seen it since, but as a kid, I've seen it in quite, pe in, in broken up as a kid because it used to be on TV. But yeah, as a, I kind of saw odd bits broken up as it was replayed on certain channels. But yeah, I did enjoy it because I mean, when he had the sword, it just it was so glowing. Of the yeah. studio lights hitting his armor, he just looked so sparkly. And also that that was like I mean, nowadays we're used to it, but back then that was one of the first movies that I remember where you had knights fighting, and um, their armor looked really realistic and. Um, their weapons and everything, and uh, the whole thing was kind of up, set up to a new level. And at the time, everybody was really into dunge Dungeons and Dragons and stuff, including me. And LARPing hadn't happened yet. So that movie was like a big deal for us. And also, we were teenagers, and it was like one of our first rated <laughs> R movies that I went to. So it was oh, nice. exciting for that, too. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah wow that's something yeah now i'm looking at the next freeze frame which is like two seconds in where it's showing the guy holding his excalibur type of sword that's got it's a magic sword because it's got some mist and some glowing stuff coming off it yes so yes that again, plays yeah. uh, a component in this story as well yeah and again the effects look really good yeah do you guys do those effects in Da Vinci or how do, how do they do that? I do, at the moment, I do a lot of the visual effects myself. Oh, really? Oh. Um, yeah, so I've, I've, it's something that I've been very into over the last, sort of well, since I was in my teens, uh, oh. starting from very, so yeah, so a lot of it I do myself. Um, but as, as we kind of get deeper into production, it will be looking to other people to jump okay. in and do some really interesting projects. So how did you do it? How do you do um, so the glowing yeah, eyes? Use, so after, um, Adobe After Effects, the okay. creative suite, like, uh, yeah, it's, I've used it for over 10 years. It's just, I'm, yeah, it's just so good for that. Uh, da Vinci does have a VFX sort of um, interface called Fusion. Uh, okay. But yeah, it's, again, it's just, it's need time to learn it. That's the kind of thing. Okay. It, um, but yeah, so I do those shots in After Effects and then color grade it in Da Vinci. Hmm. Okay. Wow. So you and, and are you the one who also edits it, edits everything. Yes. Yeah, okay. I'm a, bit, I'm a bit of a one man uh, band at the moment when it comes to uh, the post production side. My kind of guy. Okay. Finally. Yeah, I do, I you do know enjoy what? it. <laughs> so you're the editor. You're the. Do you also write the script? Yeah, I, wrote, I came up with this story with a good friend of mine called Craig. Um, he's in the film. He's the one actually holding the sword. Um, okay. Do so the editor so, yeah, of the script. So, you're yep. the producer, obviously. Um, are you also the director? Yeah, that's that's my main. I think the kind of the uh, yeah, it's so directing and yeah, closely with the kind of the cinematographer as well. And then cinematographer. Yeah, so, so you're actually also behind the camera sometimes. Are you the camera person? Yeah, a lot also? of the time. Yeah, I've got um, um, a good friend of mine. I've got two people who are involved in helping shoot um, scenes, and these are two guys who together we've worked on the viking stuff before and so between the three of us we've we have that same aesthetic we kind of discovered that visual language that we like together through trial and error and then we did the viking right stuff. and so we just gelled through that so so there is a consistency um going forward with um if i'm on the camera or um, one of the guys called Morgan or the other guy called Danny, those guys, whoever's on camera and stuff like that, we're just, we work so well together that we can create the kind of, it creates that consistency with visual look because we're just so in tune with, with each other for it and stuff. So yeah, so it's really good. So yeah, I'm manning the camera a lot of the time. These, yeah. So it's just <laughs> all of us with cameras just shooting. <laughs> wow. Okay. I want to dig into the weeds big time now. So you mentioned, when we were talking about 4K, you mentioned that um, 
you had certain settings on the camera that you did. And see, I, I just assumed that you would just shoot it completely raw with basically no real settings and try to get it as sharp as you can. And then once you get it into your software, like Premiere Pro or DaVinci, yep. then that's where you start messing with it. Like, and yep. especially one thing that's cool about 4K, of course, it's so sharp that you could still shoot it wide. And then you can now in the software, you can still do some zooming and panning in the software. Oh, absolutely. Want, absolutely. It's, it's so useful. It's so useful because again, things sometimes you might have a shot, which is shaky and you mm -hmm. think, Oh, damn it. God, you know, I just at the time it looks fine, but because again, slight nudges or whatever, you're standing awkwardly shooting something, and when you get it in the editing, you see it on the full screen, you think, oh, it's. But if you shot on 4K and you do like an image stabilization through the software, it crops in a little bit because it tries to anchor mm -hmm. in the, in the shot. So so you having the 4K, it crops in a bit to stabilize. Right. Well, that's great. That's that's a perfect thing because again, you've got the detail there to allow the software to do that. Mm -hmm. So now you've got a nice stable shot if if something like that happens, and you don't Again, want camera shake. <laughs> yeah, it depends yeah. on it depends on what the shot is. You know, it yeah. depends if it's got, if, yeah, it depends if it's an erratic action or yeah, it's a technique for sure. Okay, so did you even do this? Um, this this um, I guess you call it a logo, where we're seeing There's a map. The, we're seeing the map, and then we're seeing Gullimere teaser yep. trailer. Yep. So you did that too, huh? Yes. Again, I was in After Effects, yeah, using a 3D plugin to do the titles. Yeah, right. rotating and stuff. Yeah. See that? See, I can understand that. I mean, I guess most YouTubers would understand that because we always have to do this one-person show. And um, and to me, it seems like it's actually a great advantage if the person who's doing it is highly skilled, got a lot of experience, and has a real clear vision of what they're trying to create, right? Because you you have you don't have to train five people. <laughs> yeah, to, if I could to, clone yeah, myself yeah. five times, alrighty, yeah. that's, that would be <laughs> that would be very helpful. But yeah, and that. Yeah. And like, that's the thing that gets me is when you have the editor and the director and the cinematographer are three different people, that seems like that would just be really hard to manage, but that's kind of how they do it in the, in the real world, I guess. Cause yeah. like when I'm, I always talk about this, but like, say I'm the director and we're shooting a scene, right? And I've got it like, okay, since you're doing all these things, do you storyboard stuff or is it mostly in your head? It's a mixture. There, there are some scenes coming down the line in, in phase two of this block money that we're trying to raise where yeah. um, there are some heavy dialogue sequences now where we need to get into the sort of the meat of the story. And there's, a, there's just loads of characters interacting around a, a campfire. So yes, there will be storyboarding for shots and coverage and making sure we get all the dialogue and everything, the correct beats of the characters and things like that. Okay. But then sometimes it just is either just in my head or we, you just got to kind of go for it. You just right. got to go for it. And um, But that's the kind of the unpredictability of any filming, even in Hollywood, they say someday they've just gone, right, we, we just threw the storyboard away and we just we went go. for it. You've got to go for it. Right. And in those cases, if you don't, if you don't have a storyboard and it's in your head, do you find yourself um, doing a lot of alternate shots and stuff, like trying it a bunch of different ways? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's a time and place for kind of having it in your head and trying new things. And a lot of that, that falls down to, because you've got the main, you've got the key pieces of the story, but then there's all these really nice other interconnecting stuff, whether, whether it's the, you know, traveling across locations or doing something or just having these moments where they might stop by a river and fill up their water or whatever. There's just all these things where you can try these different things, different angles. And, and then it allows the, um, the actors to kind of inject their own little kind of flair to their characters and things right. of how they might be. And it is, it's a, and it's a nice exercise into kind of getting them into getting used to the costumes or uh, when with the filming, it, um, that we did in the forest it was raining <laughs> so it, it, just all the costumes start to get heavier 
and they were just like oh my god i just can't <laughs> walking is just right we've got to walk this way now oh, how long for probably about 20 minutes oh. <laughs> yeah. and but when you sit on their faces you can just see that they just look miserable <laughs> and that's what you want it makes it look more realistic yes, yeah absolutely yeah and the mud starts to churn up on their boots and on their cape and yeah it just adds it just stuff like that you can't plan right and that's and those kind of moments sometimes the best moments in movies are the ones that aren't planned right and end up being like a, yeah yeah and that's <laughs> the kind of thing as well that's good i like to kind of leave room for things like that well that takes a certain talent too it takes a certain talent also it takes a certain courage of a director to be able to just let things happen and then they spot something and they're like yeah do that like you, you didn't even have any idea that you were going to do that but then you see something and then you kind of guide them in that direction a little bit and let them do it you know kind yeah. of stuff that's one thing is yeah. i know there are many directors who are well you see it you know from whether interviews with famous directors some are just like this is how i want you to say these lines do it this way and they don't leave any room for kind of you know experimentation and things for me I'm, you know, with the actors involved, I always have a very open dialogue of things. I give them all the information for the characters, but at the same mm -hmm. time, I just like to let them kind of run, try things, support each other, help each other if they're having problems or if any with, with certain scenes. And so having that dialogue, talking about it and just, yeah, let them try because, again, you want them to, because they've got ideas that they want to try and bring to the character and things. And it might just be things that I haven't even thought about. And it's like, wow, yeah, great. Yeah, that's great. And, yeah, do that. and not only that, in between, and it just helps with the edit as well. If you're very strict and saying, I want the line to be said like this, and I want you to say it like this, then, well, then when it comes to, what, well, so I've got 10 takes of the same thing. Well, What's then the, the editor, whoever, you takes. know, if there was an editor, yeah. is going to be bored. It's just going to, well, it's just the same for each one. But if they're trying slightly different things each time or doing something that's a bit more intense, a bit less, or it just offers a whole kind of, a, you know, a great puzzle to stitch together in the edit. It just it creates, you can try different versions and see what works better, what flows, or what works, what doesn't. And it just allows a more organic process. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and that's why, see, that's why I think in, when the director and the editor are the same person, then you can think that way. Absolutely. You know? and, uh, but at the same time, there can be a, and I've seen it in movies before, where the directors edit their movie, and they get quite precious with their edit, because they go, yeah. oh, I like this shot, oh, I love this shot, but at the same time, it's... You know, it's either going on too long or it's, it's dragging the story to, a, you know, grinding it to a halt. And those are things I'm very, very conscious of as well. Okay. And and I just want to make it. I'm, just, I'm very ruthless when it comes to if something doesn't work, it's out. out. It's, it's out. It's <laughs> got to be. And, yeah, there will be, um, yeah, kind of lots and lots and lots of edits and things. And well, one thing I like to people. say when I, when I try to tell people an editor, an editor is someone where you take – a ton of footage, right? And 90% 90, 90 of it is crap. And you have to go find the 10, five or 10% that's good. And then you have to stitch it together in a way that actually tells a story, you know? Because yeah. without an editor, all you have is you've got a script and you've got a mountain of footage. Most of it God. is useless. Oh my God, yeah. And then, but when they bring the editors the one who takes all that and turns it into a movie. You yes, know. absolutely. Yeah, no, it is. Uh, it is a fun process. I do yeah. enjoy it. I do enjoy it. But I just think it's. I think the hardest thing is just because filming. It's just never shot in sequential order. It's just all mm -hmm. shot, ass to face, back to front, left and right, up and down. It's, and then it's just trying to remember in my head. Okay, well that what we shot there. That's going to go with something later on, and whatever we shoot there, that's connect. And it's just trying to organize all the folders ready for when we get What's all the next? pieces and trying to remember that that connects to that one to make okay. sense or whatever. Do, do you have a continuity person or are you also that person? <laughs> well, I mean, I have I do my best, but at the same time, I have kind of designated each actor to be like, right, you are in charge of I, making sure that you've got the exact costume on. And you cannot and get a haircut and we're oh, done God, doing that That's scene. one of the hardest <laughs> things. That's one of the hardest things with... Uh, because you know i mean if if by the filming gods we were blessed with say someone said here's 
10,000 to, to finish Galamir. Well, then, okay, we could book off two weeks and we could just shoot it nonstop and get it done. But I'm thinking of a, of a worst case scenario. I, I said to these guys in the beginning, guys, we, we could be sh- most likely be shooting on and off for the rest of the year. So commit to what hairstyle you want, whether it is shorter or long, beard or no beard, <laughs> and and you got to stick to it. <laughs> Yeah. But thankfully, as well, all our heroes have hoods. <laughs> okay, that helps. I've kind of thought Ed, so they got hoods, and there's something goes wrong, they've got a hood <laughs> for, for, for some stuff. Yes, if, if that was a you know, they're, they're trimming their beard and they <clears throat> sneezed, and it's taken half their sideburn <laughs> off. All righty, <laughs> hood up. <laughs> oh, wow, that's so fun. <clears throat> So it's at, so I think last time you said I think the plan was it was going to be a, about a ten or twenty minute film. Yeah, we're aiming for we've got two working scripts. We've got one that's a condensed version into a short form, okay. and we've got a overall picture. So we're we're sh- we're aiming for the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. We're shooting, we're shooting, we're shooting. But at the same time, we are building the kind of the sh- short form just for things like festivals and. If something was to happen, say, with filming, I don't know, something might happen. You know, we live in very unpredictable times. We might not be able, you know, it might come a point where we don't shoot for the next seven months. I don't know. And so it just means that, okay, rather than having just a quarter of something of a big picture, well, we've got all this to, to make a condensed version of that. So at least we've got something oh, okay. in kind of thing. So, yeah, so it's, and again, it's just, but these days you've got short films and then feature films. That was like the old days. Now you've got pilots, you've got like 40 minute long episodes, you've got like a pilot or you've got something that you can do with a cliffhanger. There's just all these different ways you can edit something into a particular mm-hmm. thing which since streaming has sort of exploded. So yeah, we've just got so many different options really. Or you could have a series and you could just have on your YouTube channel or however you want to do it and have like have episode 10 minute episodes, you know. Or, there's, um, loads only ways of, do there's loads of different ways uh, yeah at the moment there's no answer i like the idea of having a nice bigger film but again there could be you know it might just be better to do as a broken up episode thing again it just depends you know once you get into the edit stage and we've got all the footage and you look at it as one piece then you can sort of make the decision there could be one that's a feature film there could be a version where it is broken up there could be yeah it's at the moment it's no idea no idea. Again, there's so many. Yeah, that's a whole nother ball game when you get to that. Yeah, <laughs> that's really cool. <clears throat> so fun. And you're, and I can't even remember if you did you go to film school or are you mostly self taught or learn by doing? Over the, or? Year, over the lot of years, it's very self taught. I did go to university and I studied film and art. So there okay. wasn't, there was a bit of filmmaking involved, but it's more about the kind of the, yeah, the kind of the art. It was a, it was a very art based. Um, Because I used to do a lot of fine art in school as well and things like that. I did enjoy it in college and painting and artwork. I like, yeah, he was always big into that. But then I started really getting into, I think, sort of Lord of the Rings onwards. It just, I love movies. And yeah, it sort of kind of transitioned more into sort of filmmaking stuff. So yeah, over the years, Mm. just a lot of learning myself as well. And that's one thing where YouTube is a, a big sort of cesspool full of rubbish. But at the same time, there is a wealth of knowledge in there and there's loads of people who do great um insight into things into cameras into editing into color grading and things and Mm -hmm. then they yeah it's just i've learned more than i in there than i did at sort of university these days i'm looking back right yeah valuable and it's for free you know it's there that's the thing if you want it if you want to learn it you can you know there's no excuse if you want to kind of dive into something and learn something and then it's up to you film stuff make trial and error i've i've shot so many things over the years that many people haven't seen but it's more of just practicing trial and making those right. mistakes learning from that learning you know, by doing it. yeah it's really interesting well again i'll do another plug for the orville so um <laughs> yeah seth nice. mcfarlane and of course everybody everybody's got to watch the orville season three da, dum, da, 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 da. <laughs> um, i saw an interview with seth mcfarlane and i mean we know him now we know him as the 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 guy behind the Orville, uh, but also there's a, all these other shows, comedy shows he's done. But he started out when he went to school. 
he wanted to be an animator. Like he wanted yeah. to, he wanted, he was hoping to um, eventually work for Disney. And then somehow um, he started, he did a couple animated shorts. And then same thing again, he start, he, he had to write, it was a one man deal. So he had to write his scripts and do the voices and everything. And then he realized, oh, you know what? I'm pretty good at writing scripts. I'm pretty good at doing some of these voices, you know? And then he landed his first show. I think it was... Um, uh, I think it's like Johnny Bravo or... I think he kind of got into that sort of Johnny Bravo. And yeah, I think Dexter's you're right. Little, uh, Cartoon Network back in the day. I used to love all that as a, as a kid. Right. And I think Family Guy, the pilot for Family Guy was just something he did on the side, um, like in his garage. On, he had some spare time. And so he was putting all the stuff in it and then he pitched it and it took off. And I then... think at that point, I think it's, you know, I think at that point Simpsons exploded and it changed the, the landscape of animated shows. And uh, yeah, so he probably was like, yeah, family guy, something over here. Yeah. But then yeah. again, so that's like, well, he started off with one path of, of his vision of where he thought his life was going, but that led to something. Now he's doing a sci-fi show, live action sci-fi yeah super high budget Star Trek type of thing, which is like yeah. so far from cartoons. There's, there's one yeah. thing I've learned over the years. There's no, I've been to so many seminars um, that have had producers, filmmakers, even I've gone to the BAFTA headquarters, which is like a prestigious, the one below the Oscars in London, where uh -huh. they do talks of all these kind of filmmakers and things like that. And, and, it's all great. You kind of learn their history when they first started out to where they got to. And there's always that kind of gap in the middle where it's just like they just did, you know, before they were like independent to all of a sudden their first feature. And there's always this kind of hazy gray area where they never quite answer correctly. So when they do the Q&A, always the first answer is, well, how did you get in the industry? And always the response from everyone all these talks I've been to and goes, well, I was actually quite lucky actually because I was doing something and it took me down a different path that I never quite expected. And so there's no it just right happens. or way. It's just no right or way. But I just think you've got to keep going, keep going because if, you know, things like anything creative or whatever, if if it was easy, everyone would do it. You mm -hmm. know, and, and the same with filmmaking, if it was easy, everyone would do it. And yeah, a lot of people have an idea. Oh, I'd love to make a film because you can use an iPhone now. That's mm -hmm. the new iPhone 13. It shoots a Apple ProRes RAW. You can shoot a film. You can shoot something on it and it looks amazing. But again, a lot of people realize quite quickly that, oh, well, you're lighting this. You need to have a cast. You need to have a story. And oh, no, how do I edit? What, oh, mm -hmm. and, they, and a lot of people go, ah, oh, I can't be bothered. I'm not doing I'll just, it. I'll, I'll just stick to doing selfies on TikTok or something like that. It's much easier. So it's just, you got to, you know, just got to keep going, keep going because you, you just, you got, I think with any kind of creative, whether you're a writer, a, a, you know, game developer, an artist, poetry or whatever you just got to keep going keep going mm -hmm. grow a thick skin because there's always there's going to be thousands upon thousands of no's but somewhere at some point it just takes that one person to go you know what it's yeah not, i don't know i like what this person does he or she i like what they do mm -hmm. yeah you know what i'll give them a chance and you just never know but yeah there's just, so much to it um and of course obviously it's your passion like for you i mean you're putting in like huge amounts of time mm. that you're not getting paid for right you know no no none of and things are none of us everyone involved yeah. is not but you I love mean, it, it so it's like i mean it's fun and but yeah. the, the, and so you just keep putting in all you know hours and hours and hours and hours of work for all these little details to yeah but i think that's i think that's what's so fascinating about the arts is that um at least for me, what fascinates me is that what you're doing is you're always trying to find out, you have to learn all these little details that come together to create a certain type of feeling or a certain type of look or whatever. And to me, that's always the fascinating thing is how it's like what creates the magic of that scene or that piece of music or, or that piece of art that you, that suddenly you're like, ah, that's it. I finally did it, you know? And it's always that exploration of that one tiny little spot of paint right there in the corner somehow makes the whole thing work, you know? 
that yep. that stuff is fascinating to me absolutely you know? and yeah same that's kind of like the editing you know sometimes you look at editing why is it not working oh, something something's missing and then you do something or add something and it just gels it together and it just the whole thing works right so and yeah it can be just anything this, sometimes yeah. it's just the soundtrack like, absolutely. like maybe you just need a certain sound effect right there or maybe just tweak the music a little and then suddenly oh wow that just made it all happen you know yeah yeah, that's the that's the fun stuff looking forward to down the line. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, just uh yeah, focusing on filming. Uh yeah, just uh yeah, crowdfund number two and yeah. Okay, just, we're putting uh, that in the description of course. <laughs> Wicked, thank um, you. And folks, yeah, be sure. I mean, do you also have Patreon or is it all just the crowdfunding? It's just more crowdfunding. I've thought about Patreon before, but I just think I'm not a regular generating of of content because i know a lot of people who do patreon they're they're generating stuff on a regular mm. basis right well with what we're doing it's it is a, a slow burner sadly um so i just thought well it's yeah i just i don't think i just i just i kind of just pushed it out of my mind really and just are there comic-con just... type of events or things like that 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 you could take this to or i've do you know i've out? recently thought about it and i think it's the first year where it's starting to pick up momentum again because because of the last couple of years as we know it's been very you know, very lax and very strange on the system and stuff and i think this is the right. first year now i think there's a couple coming up which i think it feels like it's oh wow it's like almost normal again it's great mm -hmm. so i think going forward i i have thought about it i have thought about maybe because there'd be something like a panel or something something yeah even like a little booth someone that's got like you can go inside sit there and it's got like a yeah i mean TV i mean you can just have a table you can just yeah. have a table with your banner and then a yeah. laptop that's showing scenes from your movie yes yeah, and like yeah, one or something. two of the actors there in costume you know they want to yeah absolutely yeah talk to people or yeah, i have thought about it i have thought about it so yeah just i just it's yeah. fun. I mean, you have to also be into that kind of thing. Like, if oh, you yeah, like, oh, I love Comic Con. People. I used to do lots of uh, cosplay and things like that. Okay. Last year, I did a John Wick and a John Snow uh, for oh, my like, yeah. friends and stuff. So yeah, I had all the sword and everything, and <laughs> yeah, it was loads of fun. Loads of fun. I did miss it. I do miss it. So yeah, I do want to go back at some point, and whether it was dressed up as someone. Yeah. It's loads of fun. It's loads of fun. It's just so many, so many talented people with amazing costumes these days. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, I suppose we should wrap it up. So, uh, so what do we have? We got the new, the new fundraisers going, yep. which I already contributed to, as you oh, know. Oh no! Bless you. You're, you're an absolute you. diamond. Everybody. <laughs> Send your money here. I mean, 25 cents is like, it's going to make a whole nother beautiful frame in this uh, movie. Anything, you know? <laughs> anything, you know, and it's just even, it's, it's tough as well because we live in a very strange climate where people are struggling to even afford their bills these days. Mm. So it's probably the worst time ever, I think, in, in, in our lifetime of, trying to raise a particular crowdfund to get you know it's just like hmm can i afford to keep my lights on versus this hairy bearded man wants to make a fancy film it's like hmm what am i gonna pick <laughs> so i do get that as well it is very tough but right it's not going to stop us from shooting it it just it just means that okay it would take a bit longer to shoot it and things but it just means that we're going to do it in stages but mm -hmm. even if it's like someone drops a dollar or whatever or even just shares it because again, it's just that traction of just sharing it, and it's just that mm -hmm. algorithm as well. Because as <clears throat> yep. long as you can sort of bombard it and go, guys, check this out, because it all adds up. I mean, for example, I've oh, I don't have many followers on say Facebook, but mm -hmm. I've got say five hundred friends. All right, mm -hmm. even if those guys just put a, a, a dollar in, that's like five hundred dollars right there, and that is, mm -hmm. you know, that's a, that's another good couple of days shooting right there for us. Mm -hmm. You know. So yeah, it, it's just one of those things, and it's just <laughs> just got, got to keep going, keep trying, keep trying, and and the main thing is it's trying to get people interested when there's no fan base there. If this was like a if if we're doing like a Star Wars fan film or like a Harry Potter fan film, 
and he did a crowdfund, you're going to have so many people throw so much money because the, the fan base is there. So the right. one thing that's very challenging for us as well is to get people to believe in what we're doing. And that's one thing I've always just been very open and honest about what we're doing and very trying to be as authentic as possible in the, what we're trying to do and be open with our trials and, you know, and the uncertainties that come with filmmaking as well. And, you know, there's never a guarantee for the success of this, but what we want to do is make sure that when this film is finished, that when we look at it, 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 it stands out from, from right. the kind of the, the generic. Yeah, you're really style. proud of it. Yeah, you... and everyone can look at it and go, you know what? Yeah, that is really good. It has something, it has qualities in there that are missing from a lot of, because I see yeah. it, I admit there are certain moments in movies and TV shows that aren't there anymore. They're just so quick to kind of gloss over and go, right, next scene, next scene, next scene. And I go, but we wanted that moment with that character. We wanted to have a bit of a something. And they're like, nope, next. It just, yeah, right. it's, yeah it's just. <laughs> of yeah. course, with streaming now, they're not locked into only 45 minutes. You know, now they can, yeah. now it can be as long as they want it to be. So that yeah, you relaxed get, you that. Know, sometimes um, you get like an hour and 20, you know, like Stranger mm -hmm. Things, for example, which is like a 45 minute series four, part one, seven hour movie. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just seven, yeah, or seven movies worth of things. Same and, type of thing, yeah. So yeah, yeah, you can. I think yeah, there's. I think there's lots of flexibility. So yeah, so that's another hurdle, as I said, down the line to figure out what's the best way to display this in the best way possible. So yeah, there's all these fun things to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah, whatever I can do. I mean, just <clears throat> keep hitting me up, uh, message me or whatever, and then however, if somehow I can help promote it. Besides, I mean, we can just keep doing interviews like this too, and. Um, or whatever. I can't remember if you're on Twitter or not. I am on Twitter. Yeah, I don't okay. use it as much. Sometimes I do put a thing on there for. Uh, I, I, you know, you end up with so many social media accounts yeah. these days. <laughs> oh my god, which I'm one? happy to retweet your stuff too. I mean, oh, I mean, sure. I have four thousand uh, followers, which is on one hand, everybody's like, "Oh wow, that's a lot." And uh, yeah, but no, still, I mean, I think, I think I've I think I've only got maybe two hundred or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really you have using to. It that much. I mean. <clears throat> I actually had a strategy for building followers that turned out to work really well, which is basically anybody that that um, has anything to do with Star Trek in their bio, I follow them. And then, and I have Star Trek in my bio, and so they almost always follow me back. And so now I have 4,000 Star Trek interested people that are my followers. And they're interested and so, in, that, yeah. in that sort of, yeah, genre. Yeah, so like, I mean, like, you, you could do a um, Lord of the Rings type of thing, same type of thing, yeah, or fantasy, fantasy or things, and um, people who do like fan art and things like that. And just yeah. follow these people, yeah, yeah, it works. It takes a lot of time. I mean, it, it, it was a very um, concerted effort, and I'm always on Twitter every day tweeting stuff. And so, I mean, yeah, you have to. It it takes quite a bit of effort to build up followers on Twitter. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, totally. Yeah, uh, but again, it's just, I find yeah. it quite useful. I yeah. mean, that's, I think that's how, that's how I met, um, Eric Moran, who I <laughs> believe is the man. person, the guy that introduced me to you, right? I think that's absolutely, how you and I hooked yeah. up. Yeah. yeah absolutely, Basically yeah. he and I did an interview and he of course is totally into the Oroville. Yeah. And so. Doing the, uh, the, um, oh, was it the planetary, uh, it planetary? planetary step. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, yeah. He's yeah, putting a lot of effort in. I yeah. mean, the costume, the costumes are really good. <laughs> yeah, and he also is doing I... a puppet show version of it now. Yeah, so, I think that was the yeah. last one I saw. It was like, yeah, they went on this planet, and then something happened. They changed these sort. Of Everybody turned into puppets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, very wacky. Yeah, well, and that's part of it too. I think the a really cool thing about this scene, at least that I've magnified, is that. That you can't, you don't think of your fellow creators as competition. Instead, just keep building a bigger and bigger community where everybody's helping everybody, you know? Absolutely. I think that's the kind of the way forward because, again, just over the years where producers and, you know, they used to make these big temple movies, they used to trickle down a bit of the money, you know, here's a million, three million. Hundred thousand or whatever it is to to keep the you know to keep the market fresh, 
Because again, what is that to some of these producers? Nothing. That's like yeah. giving someone ten dollars and go, hey, here you go. If you go, it kid. works, if it works, they've potentially got a brand new franchise with new actors, new up and coming directors. If it fails, it's it's nothing, you know. But they don't do that anymore. It's just such a big gap. It's either Star Wars, Marvel, DC, and there's nothing sort of in between anymore. Yeah. So it just <clears throat> feels like, yeah, we've we've got to support us underdogs and support each other and share our stuff because again, yeah. again you know, there could be a way for our voice to be heard at some point. And it's just, I find it incredibly fascinating just to, to hang out and talk to creative people. You oh know? yeah, of course. And just, of course, you know, we're all, we're share all, ideas and yeah, we're all passionate about what we love and, and yeah. And it's, yeah. if you're not passionate about it, then it's just, well, then you're not going to do anything. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's really neat. Cool. Okay. Well, it's good talking to you again. Oh, and thank you very much. Oliver, it's really always a blast. It. And, um, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Sorry. We started a little late today. I could, no, I not, at not at all. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. Because we're halfway all. around the world. Like right now it's 7 a.m. my time here in the Seattle area. And it's, I think it's nighttime yeah. over in the UK. No, no. It's a uh, half three in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Oh, it's time for your siesta. Siesta. <laughs> oh yeah. Good old siesta. I love a power nap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, take care, sir. Thank you. Uh, looking Thank forward you, to always. And again, everybody take a look at uh, the links in the description for sure. Just if you can contribute any tiny amount to the, to the fundraiser, it's any little bit helps. I mean, $1, yeah, $5, anything. So it all, anything. It all helps. It all gets utilized. Yeah, and for sure, share share the fundraiser too, you know, and share this video. Um, and like you said, we're, you're going to see the trailer when we we talked about it earlier. When I edit it in, you'll see how good it is. It's super yeah. cool. Super I haven't good. even made that trailer public yet. Oh, yeah. Ooh, so this is like the <laughs> secret place to find it. Um, uh, also, yeah. you do have a YouTube channel where you show a lot of behind the scenes stuff too, right? Absolutely, yes. Uh, Which I found very YouTube. fascinating. Yeah, be, yeah it, um, there's a few. I think there's one coming out next week, and then another one the after, which is like to do with all the underwater sequence that we shot. So, right. Yeah. Some cool. Some cool. Also, stuff. that I, hasn't I'm, come out yet because you showed it to me. Where uh, oh, did I send you the underwater? Is I saw the, the one cool where you guys were actually you were in a pool, shooting yep. stuff in a pool. And then when I saw this trailer, I'm like, oh, that's that pool shot. Yeah. But it, in the trailer, it looks completely real. It's like they're in this dark lake. Yeah. So just using After Effects yeah. and lighting, you turned that pool shot. Yeah, into... I mean, yeah, clever lighting because we had like a pool that, and we, we blocked out all the lights. So made it as dark as we could and then spotlight on top of the right light. so so when swimming for it you just get all the beautiful glistening of the light hitting the particles and then hitting and uh, you swimming through it and it just it just makes it the, was beautiful yeah i would have never if i saw that scene i would never have known it was shot in a pool had i not actually seen how you guys did it <laughs> but yeah that yeah you've you seen know. that but yeah that video comes out in a couple of weeks time so there's all that to look forward to and yeah, yeah and just, the fight just, I mean, scenes you were showing the the choreography with the stunt yeah, people we, yeah we've done that we're not shooting that for i think probably sort of where are we now june july probably sort of august time sort of late early late summer time okay um yeah because summertime is a bit of a, a funny few months because everyone's like oh, i'm with my family or oh, i'm going on holiday right. so it's like oh my god I know. <laughs> but it, yeah it's going to be shot at some point so but i'm I know just trying to that. <laughs> i'm just trying to get everything as planned as possible, you know, practicing early, the choreography early, all this kind of stuff. So when we get to it, it's just as efficient as possible. Yeah. I mean, I know all about that. I mean, I like in my show, my Star Trek show, I'm, I'm just so, you wouldn't believe how much I'm always chasing down actors, <laughs> trying to find that one little slot where they can shoot their scene. Luckily my stuff is all green screen and, and a lot of them do it over Zoom. So it's possible to just say, okay, are you free on this day? <laughs> Let's do it finally. But I, yeah. I have to plan, like, I mean, I have to kind of go with the flow and get a little piece here, a little piece <laughs> there, a little piece there. And then finally I've got all of them together that I can put together and put the whole scene together, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's <laughs> a big challenge. <laughs> it's yeah, a big challenge, the logistics, yeah. Herding cats. <laughs> <laughs> do they have that expression in the UK? 
herding cats. Herding cats, yeah. (laughs) And actors, of course, are they're also their own breed. That like they're just like you just got to go with the flow. Well, absolutely. You know? <laughs> I would say if, if someone was to drop a, a good chunk budget down for us, then we could afford to then go, okay, right, we can pay, do like, you know, block a week out of filming seven days of filming and pay everyone like a, you know, a standard uh, right. rate per day and we can just get it done until right. that miracle <clears throat> happens down the line. We've got to kind of bend. Um, you totally, you have to just be. Super flexible. And <laughs> it's got to really be super accommodating. flexible. And I've cleverly woven the story in a sense that we've got our heroes together for a time and then they break off by themselves because, and, and so our heroes are, are on their own. So that makes it easier for me to kind of be like, what are you doing in a couple of weeks' time? Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. doing much. Great. We're going to shoot this scene. It's just you, me, camera guy, and some lighting. Let's go. And so- then I can do that. And then they come together for the, uh, the do you uh, find uh, yourself having to like make some major script adjustments based on real real world things does that ever happen to you um what in terms of what kind of adapting to the well like of- suppose suddenly one of your actors quits or like they're just not available anymore and you're like well Oof, that was a major yeah. character now what do i do <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you just have to completely that's... rewrite the story to like accommodate. I hope, for that. That, I hope that doesn't happen. And if it's something that did happen, we'd have to, uh, yeah, have to figure a way to, uh, uh yeah, I do. Oh, that's just like a, I'm getting heart palpitations just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, that's, yeah, it, it has happened. It has happened, you know, yeah. it's like commonplace. But so far, everyone is 100% on board and happy and excited. So that's cool. And I've yeah. said to the and I've been and I said I've been very transparent from the beginning. I said, guys, this is the situation. If you if you can only do a few days of your time and then that's it, let me know. But if you if you want to be throughout the whole duration, I don't know how long that's going to be. Then you know, it'd be great to have you on board. So I've left it in their hands, and I've been right. very flexible as well in saying that if there's any pay because they all do acting and modeling and all this kind of stuff themselves they have they you know they need to work as well so i said to them say if something pops up and it's a job just let me know and we'll make it work because you are accepting that job straight away for money this you know we can make galamir work around that don't worry so i think that's another thing that sort of eased them because again you know because sometimes they might think oh no i'm committed to galamir but uh this job over here and I promised to these guys, but I might have to turn this down, but it's money. And so I think right. I've made, I've made it very easy for them that they don't need to worry about that. Anything pops up, just let me know as advanced as possible and we can make that work. So, so yeah, so everyone on board is, you know, very happy and uh, yeah, just been very open and honest with everything, you know? So that brings up another point. So not only are you an artist, um, a filmmaker, so a cinematographer, you know how to be an editor, uh, you know how to write scripts, but also you have to be an excellent manager, right? And you have to be able to inspire people and work with all these things. I mean, these are all mm. skills that successful managers have and yeah, unsuccessful it's... managers, which seems to be about 90% of them, <laughs> don't have. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the biggest so, things is just communicate. I think it's down to communication. Um, yeah. Communication not having an ego and just being open and honest that those are i've always just carried that for everything that i've done and just and yet I've, but you I've, have a vision and you have to lead and you have to you can't yeah. just be totally wishy-washy you have to get stuff done but yeah, somehow no, you course. have that you're one of those type of people who are able to be the nice guy and empowering and get people on board and yet make the calls and lead them to where they need to go when it needs to happen yeah. Obviously, because the pr- the product that you produce is so good. Mm. Yeah, so, it's, yeah, it's yeah, it's um, yeah. I don't have a straight answer for that. Is uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I guess they believe in the vision and 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 it's something that I, you know, it's something that I've sat with for many years that I've always wanted to do filming, but I've no right. I'm not going to go right, guys. I'm going to make a film. And then it's just an idea that I've just had. And, but I've just really thought about it for years. I've really practiced. I've really honed the craft and the skills and the, the visions, experiments, trial and error. And I've got to that point after doing the two Viking stuff 
that I thought, oh, yeah, no, I feel I'm in that place now that I can now do a good story yeah, uh, with, with actors and things like that. So I think that is kind of the patience and the long game, I think, that I think that's kind of... So this is your first people. film of this scale? Yes, yes. Because, yeah, I've done loads of short films and things like that in the past, that, some that I've never seen. Um, but the two Viking stuff the first time where I've been like, oh, yeah, no, I'm really, really proud of what we've done. Yeah, it's not without its flaws, like anything, you know, nothing's ever perfect. But I thought, right, okay, this I can now, I feel like I can bring it to the table and go, guys, this is what we're trying to do. This is the idea for Galena. This is the scope. And, you know, and these are the things that I, you know, I'm, I feel confident that I can put it off in a way that is done well. And it looks good. It doesn't come off cheap. Right. Yeah. Well, again, like kind of what we were talking about, there's that, <laughs> You're trying to create that illusion or that effect of quality, that thing. Yeah. The people, people, your your lay person can kind of identify it and say, yeah, that's a quality thing. But then it's up to you and to realize all that it takes to make that yeah. sensation, you know. But yeah. that's that's the art of it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Fun okay. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so most people on my show, you do know Star Trek too a little bit, right? Yeah, I've dabbled in yeah in so many different. <laughs> then we can do live long and prosper. Okay, let's see. So you got to go like this. There we go. Live long and prosper, my friend. And I look forward to <laughs> to seeing some more of your amazing work. Oh, thank and you. To... Thank you for being so supportive as always. Really. Oh yeah, sure. we'll get we'll get back together again. So yeah. until next Amazing. time. Until All right, next Oliver. time. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Thank you. From Kosh Production. Fantastic creations emerging spontaneously from the space of life. For the benefit of all beings everywhere. We gotta change.